This is a DigitNow HDMI video capture device, standalone capture device with a 5 inch monitor on it. I'm going to test this out with several HDMI sources as well as other AV sources. That's coming up on Thrifty AV. With most HDMI capture devices on the market, you need a computer to hook it up to. Not with this DigitNow HDMI capture device. This is a standalone device and it has a 5 inch monitor on it so you can really see what you're capturing. And not only does it do HDMI, it'll also do standard definition composite signals. But wait, this is out of the box. Let's back up and check out the unboxing. Here is the box for the DigitNow HDMI capture device. It is a sealed box, but there's no DigitNow branding on the front. In fact, the only DigitNow branding you can find is on this sticker here uh, that says DigitNow with the barcode. The box is rather nice. There's something in here. Got a thank you card from DigitNow. Here's a notice that the SD card should be FAT32 or EX FAT. So if it's NTFS, you're going to have to reformat. And here is a rather thick manual. It's multilingual. Okay, here is the device itself. Now that is a pretty large screen on this. It has a very quality construction here. This is this is all metal. These buttons appear to be multi-purpose. Volume up, volume down, and uh, looks like backwards and forwards probably for menus. And there's a power button. Menu button, mode button, previous or preview, okay, and next. Let's see what else is in here. This would be used when transferring older analog standard definition video. And we have a USB type C cable here. Here is a power adapter. Ooh, with some plastic to peel. Let's peel this plastic. Nice. And this appears to be a short HDMI cable. I was not expecting an SD card. Looking at the manual under package contents, there is no mention of the SD card, so that might be just something they threw in there. They say it needs to be uh, FAT32, maximum capacity of 128 gig, and a speed level of at least 10. Checking my computer, this SD card has a capacity of 60 gigabytes, so that's going to come in handy. Let's look at all the ins and outs on this thing. This is USB Type-C. It's both data and power. Here's a regular USB port. Here's where you plug in your SD card. Okay, here's the HDMI out, the HDMI in. And not only does it have an AV in, but it also has an AV out. So that's pretty neat. Before I use this, I want to fully charge the battery. So I'm going to use the adapter that came with it and the USB Type-C cable that came with it. And one nice thing about USB-C is it's not possible to plug it in the wrong way. Oh, there it goes. It just powered up. It says no card. The card goes in upside down and there's a little spring action. You need to get your uh, thumbnail or fingernail on the edge. The battery appears to be pretty much dead, so I'm going to wait for this thing to fully charge before I use it. While the DigitNow is charging, I want to compare screen sizes between the DigitNow and these other capture devices I have here. Okay, this one that only captures standard definition is three and a half inches diagonally. This one is three and a half inches diagonally. And the DigitNow is five inches diagonally. So you're going to see a lot more detail on the DigitNow than you will on these other devices that have smaller LCD screens. And of course, capture devices like these don't have any LCD screen and require a computer to operate. 
the digit now I'll be able to use without a computer. Once the battery is fully charged, the charge indicator turns fully green. Uh, before I capture some video, let's get into the menu here. Uh, language is English, and there are eight language choices. System date time settings. In order to change the system date and time settings, I'm having to use these buttons on the top here. And they're a little backwards from what you would think. This is taking it backwards in time. This is taking it forwards in time. 06, that's a couple of minutes off. Date stamp, I want to leave that off. Movie quality, let's look at our choices. Uh, 1080p 60 high, 1080p 60 low, and 720p. I kind of wish it had 1080p 30, but I'm going to leave it on 1080p 60 high. Video source, you can either use the HDMI or the AV. We're going to start with the HDMI. Uh, auto stop recording. Let's see what our choices are. Off 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 or 150 minutes. I'm going to leave that off. USB mode. Okay, so right now the USB mode is charging. But I can also select MSDC, which will let me use the USB-C cable to transfer files over to the computer. Default storage device. You can either store onto an SD card. I'm using the one that they provided, or you can use a USB stick. It's not actually allowing me to switch to USB. Let me plug a USB and see if that changes. Okay, I have a USB stick on here. And now it switched to USB as the default storage device without me changing it just by sticking a USB stick in there. Now I can switch it back to SD card, which I just did. Scheduled recording, I'm not gonna mess with this in this video. Restore factory settings, formatting. Okay, so I can format. I just formatted, I assume, the SD card. Let's see if I can format the USB drive. I'm going to change the default storage device to USB, and now I'm going to hit formatting. Yes, and the USB is formatting. Uh, it said complete, but that's still blinking. Okay, it looks like it's finished now. And then it has the firmware version. So I'm sure I can update this firmware if there is a newer version out there. The primary camera I use that you're watching me on right now is a Panasonic HCX1000 4K camcorder. But I'm feeding the HDMI signal from the Panasonic into the DigitNow HDMI capture device. And this 5-inch monitor here is really good for me to look at how the shot is framed and it's good as a monitor even if you're not using this as a capture device but i'm going to use it as a capture device i'm hitting record right now and i am now recording you're still watching me on the panasonic but now you're watching me on the digit now hdmi capture device this is what it looks like and this is what it sounds like back to the panasonic hcx 1000 Back to the digit now. Let's try some other devices out. I hooked my Roku 2 up to my DigiNow capture device and I ran the HDMI out into my Hitachi TV set. I picked the Roku 2 because it has the game Angry Birds, so I'm gonna capture some of that gameplay. On the digit now, when I'm using the HDMI out, I do lose the display on the digit now, but I have it on the TV, so it's really no big deal, and I'm not really noticing any lag least nothing substantial. All right, so I'm gonna start easy because I haven't played this game in a while. Now gamers should know that the DigiNow does not have a microphone or a headset input. What this means, if you want to do commentary during your uh, video games, you'll have to record that commentary on a different device. Oh, first level is pretty easy. Okay, I gotta get all those piggies. There's one of them. Two of them. 
Oh, fell short. One bird left, one pig left. Oh, no way! The next thing I want to test is the analog AV input. For that, I have this uh, mini game entertainment system, basically a knockoff Nintendo. And I'll play a little bit of it. How about some joust? First level clear, and the lava rises. When using the AV input, the file has a frame width of 720 and a frame height of 480, so it's regular old 480p, which is fine for standard definition. I've gone back to the Roku to demonstrate something else. Of course, this is the digit now. This is a different HDMI capture device. Okay, I'm going to try to play something on Curiosity Stream and capture it with this device. I haven't even hit record yet. And I got a warning, HDCP unauthorized content disabled. And I'm not even hitting record. I can't even view this content on this monitor that is being output from the Roku. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect it from this. I'm going to hook it up to the digit now, go to the record mode, and as you can see, there's the video. Let's, uh, let's hit record. And now I am recording the program off of the Roku that this other device would not allow me to even view, much less record. So the digit now is allowing me to record content that is HDCP encoded, no problem at all. I'll even put a little short clip of this video uh, to show you what it looks like. Uh, less than eight seconds, however. I want to talk briefly about hooking up your digit now to your computer. First off, in the menus, there's USB mode. If you're on charging mode, your computer's not going to recognize this at all you have to switch to MSDC mode. Also, if you were already hooked up to the computer and it was in charging mode and you switch to MSDC mode, your computer might not recognize it immediately. You might have to unplug the USB cable and plug it back in. With Windows 10, the driver loaded automatically and now the digit now is recognized as an external storage device. However, in MSDC mode, the digit out is not recognized as a video input device, so you won't be able to stream using OBS software or other streaming software using the digit now. And as stated earlier, there is no microphone or headset input on the digit now. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface on what this digit now is capable of. I have not explored all the resolutions and all the features in it. So if there's something in particular you want to know about it, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I want to thank the folks from DigitNow for sending this sample over for me to review. And I want to thank you, my viewers, for watching this video. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.